Now we'll share again. We'll start with the kids group yet again. Hello, I represent the pink group that we're about to talk about um, um, well, classes and then how could we help with cooking and science class if we had one. Sorry teachers, but actually if teachers weren't that boring, <laughs> we wouldn't be sleeping in class. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and also cooking class. If we were to do cooking class, we could learn about heat and, and measurements, degrees, and chemical reactions, which would help a lot. So we can study more about it and take tests. And also, if, if we were to, to do more fun and interesting stuff, like more science and if we could do a little bit of free time and tinkering like making stuff that would be great <laughs> thank you okay i'm representing the dark blue group and this these are our charts up here which jennifer did a great job on she used to teach kindergarten can you tell um we talked a lot, a lot of things, and we were trying to think of the things that we think students think are fun in school and exciting. That was one of our questions. And it, as you can see, a lot of them are things like the Science Olympiad, or the music program, or the art class, or the project-based opportunities that we remember when we were students. So obviously, we'd, we would all love to see more of that, I think, in our schools. And then we thought about just do it, right? Get started, have your small idea, and if you run into a hurdle, which I tend to look at the hurdles and think how are we gonna get over them, not to let it stop us, right? If that good idea about the project-based learning or what you're gonna do to make uh, the exciting learning go on in classrooms, then just start and then see what happens. Thank you. Good afternoon. I represent the, we represent the Brown Group, and we also talked a lot about El Monte and what's going on in El Monte. We felt that, we actually took the positive approach about 10 years ago, where were our facilities 10 years ago? And with the community bond that passed and we were able to get the bonds, look at the high school bonds, look at the schools that our kids are going to now. Look at the high school facilities and the elementary facilities. Look at Columbia, look at El Monte High School. Uh, a lot of sense of pride that our kids now have when they come to school, uh, I believe that made a major impact on their learning as well as preparing themselves for you know, post-secondary plans as well. So we talked about the good stuff that's been going on and how to progress, continue to re make, you know, roll the ball. A couple of things that we saw you know, were, we highlighted the president, former President Clinton in one of our schools, you know, our former governor at one of our schools. We talked about invitation to the White House all the things that have been going on within our city school district are very positive and that's something that we need to continue to promote, 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 so the kids could have that sense of pride and also want to be successful in, you know, in, in their schools. And we also talked about the things to um, prepare the kids. You know, as, as a student that grew up in the system, when I went to college, I didn't know how to do study groups. So preparing those kids how to study within small groups and how to you know, give them the resources and figure it out for themselves instead of lecturing it, I think that leads to more of the project-based learning. Doing by, by, you know, using your hand, by talking and by discussing and problem solving in, in relation to uh, the cross-curricular that we can adapt all the subjects within one project together. So we also talked about that, how to transform that learning environment into how students are learning now with the, uh, also with the addition of the technology that we're talking about. And uh, we also talked about what do parents want their students to learn about? So what do they want from our schools? So that's very important to know what the learning, what home environment is and what our, our uh, parents would like. Uh, we, all, we talked about safety. I think that's the number one thing. Are our schools safe and can they come to the school and, and be good learners because of the safety? They feel safe at our schools. So that the parents would like that as well. And I think every parent wants their kid to go to college. And what we started seeing across all schools in our district is a college-going atmosphere. 
So that leads to, I think we're all tying in things from the city of El Monte to the elementary school districts to the high school districts about making sure that our kids are exposed to college at the elementary level, not when they get to high school. By that time, it, it's almost too late. So adapting and, and having that transitional culture in our community, I think that's something that we're, uh, we're looking forward to and it's very positive. And I think we're all excited about it. Uh, we talked about having a hands-on learning. Um, almost anything that you do hands-on is memorable and kids enjoy and you're having fun. Uh, we highlight some of the program as uh, the kids cooking camp during the summer, the science camp, and then we got into talking about language. And I was explaining to my group that my son goes to a dual immersion program in Mandarin. And it just clicked on to me when he said that that's a foreign language and math will be easy for him. Well, I've never had to help him with math homework. And I always thought he got the genes from me, no, just kidding. <laughs> so, hey, you know, he's only in first grade, but I never had to help him with math homework. And I, I was telling them that I'm, I'm thinking of this as a uh, computer dual core, quad core, the languages. And if you think science, math, reading, well science, si science, and then you know all the different languages, those are the different cores and those are the different pattern. And I was also sharing that I'm a very idealistic person. When I was putting my son in a program, not only he's learning the culture, he's learning a different thinking pattern because your language is your thinking pattern. And so he has two sets of thinking pattern now, rather than one. And so that's how I try to explain it to my parents, because of course they want them to learn English. I want them to learn English too. <laughs> and then we talked about having Aspire, and Migrant Ed, and the GATE program to do or to implement some of these hands-on learning due to lack of time or space or whatever reason. They can come in and do these experimental time, maybe provide tinkering time, as they call it, to provide, you know, and make learning fun, albeit it's not during the academic time, but it's still during school time. So that's what we talked about. Well, as, as we were going through this, um, the programs that we thought of that just were outside, outside of our regular, um, I guess, regular everyday schedule, we thought of the Harvest of the Month, we thought of the band, uh, the elementary band, because seventh and eighth grade would have it as a period, but elementary band would be something, a different program, as well as science camp, which the funding isn't there or, you know, the grant went away, so kids aren't able to go. And so we thought about, hey, what was exciting about that? Because we all had some sort of experience with the science camp, and it was that hands-on experience. Um, Kathy brought up uh, a story she shared about uh, Ray O'Neill at the high school did something where the kids wrote how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. And Mr. O'Neill picked the one where the kid forgot to mention bread. So he was in front of the class reading it, performing exactly what, and putting peanut butter and jelly on his hands because the kid didn't say bread. And so he was, that hands-on experience, we asked a parent um, in, our, in, our, in our group to talk about, hey, what happened when your son or your daughter came home from school? What were they most excited about? And they were most excited when they had to build something in class. And we talked about how so much has happened that we've, got, we've gone away from that. And we have the standards, and we understand the standards are there. We're not saying to get rid of them, but how can we empower our teachers to think of a situation or somehow where they can have their science unit and maybe do that cross-curricular with history and make something that the kids can see, that they take time, and that it's differentiated because this student over here can focus, I want to make this kind of project, this one makes this project, but they still cover the same material. And so that was our discussion at our table.
So I'm, I'm representing, again, the Lavender Group. And we talked about, um, we also had the discussion, uh, uh, the questions, and we all agreed as a group that project-based learning and experiential, learn experiential learning um, is really a vehicle where it makes learning fun and it's engaging and the kids really do truly, um, and they're memorable. Um, so what we were talking about within our group though is, is how are we gonna bring that about um, amongst our district with within the schools there's you know we've got 14 different schools so we were thinking of a, a mission control um, some a centralized place where a group of people um, where stakeholders can talk and bring ideas and bring together all of these resources like what we're doing now um, so that way we can share everything our resources whether it's um, the, the facilities resource or monetary resources and human resources and capabilities so that way and then sh communicate that out to our parents and our schools about all of these things all of these opportunities that are available within our community so that way we can provide the learning and the project-based assignments and different things um, without um, necessarily going into the school you know lengthening the school day or anything like that <clears throat> Um, we also talked about, one of our uh, group members also um, shared um, how important um, coming together, collaborating as teachers, collaborating district-wide as teachers, and gaining that experience um, from each other and that learning, and so how important and vital that is for them to be able to share and get to know um, the teachers within um, their own school district. And finally, um, in speaking with um, our parent uh, member on our team, um, communication is a big, big part for all of our parents and just in, in their own native language and in English and, and communicating all of these programs and all of these resources um, that we have available is something that's very important to them. So we thought as a group, having this mission control center um, is going to be an important part in leading us through the next few years. Um. Pretty much everyone's covered pretty much everything we talked about too. Uh, we highlighted the mock trials, the science Olympiads, consumer science programs that we have at our school at, at Durfee, uh, the different music programs, choir and band. Um, someone highlighted uh, a CAD program that's going on at Frank Wright. And I think when we analyzed all the different programs, it really came down to the motivation of the teacher and the interest of the students. Uh, the teachers were extremely motivated. Um, it was their field of study, and, and that led to um, high participation. Uh, we did talk about incorporating uh, more subjects uh, within each other, the reading and math into the different content areas, and if, and if other subjects as well, like, it's, like cooking, as some of the examples were. And if you can address some standard by incorporating cooking and science, then why not do it? The students are going to internalize it, um, and it will be an event to be remembered. The parents' bottom line is they want their children to have that opportunity to go to college um, and eventually to have a good job. Um, the bottom line is with these project-based uh, learning is you learn by doing. So we need more project-based uh, uh, learning going on. And so the red group discussed all the different um, programs as well. Um, and we added to the conversation in terms of what made these programs so interesting. And one thing that, that was highlighted was the camaraderie that came out of it. Why is AVID so popular in the high school? Why are um, parents asking for their kids to be an AVID? It's not only because we're preparing the kids for college, but it's that feeling of family, it's that feeling of community. And when we looked at all our programs, I think that's what the kids are getting out of the different programs. But we did feel um, like we needed more work to do in terms of motivating our teachers or coming up with ways to help our teachers um, incorporate uh, programs like uh, Doug Halverson was discussing, the auto program at the high school district where, the, where science was incorporated, math, how to incorporate the contents into programs um, that we're looking at, the learning by doing. 
Okay, I represent the light blue group and what we thought we could identify as a program that our students are enthusiastic about was the Aspire program, the science camp, and the drama productions. Um, the drama happens at Columbia and then Aspire also does it at our school. I know we had two performances before Christmas and the kids were really excited about it. Things that seem out, out of the norm for them, things that you wouldn't think they're shy, they're um, they have hindrances about the way they speak, their language, anything. Those things, they were overcome with being able, to, being able to go up and perform and be somebody else. And I think that was really important to them and they were excited about it. Um, let's see, what our parents want, at least from our perspective, we saw a lot of them, um, they talk about English fluency. They want their kids to be able to communicate, their needs to be able to receive an education and to go out and go to college and be successful in what they do. They also um, want them to have um, computer, um, computer awareness or technology to be able to use it and to utilize it in their education and in their everyday life. More science and math and social skills. A lot of times we hear, how are my student, how is my student behaving? Um, they want more than just how are they behaving. They want to know how are they as a student, as a person. So um, those are the things that the parents want. Um, how could they learn more was project-based, so going along with the same thing, more um, project-based instruction. We used to do that a long time ago, the themes and all that, figuring out a way of incorporating it in. I know with the um, harvest of the month, we do it at our school and I'm sure at other schools as well, where you're measuring to make the different things that they provide you with and the fruits and vegetables that we get every single day, the kids are learning more and more about what they like and also the combinations that when you have leftovers, what you can do with them. Um, I gave an example in our class where we got had the two yesterday and instead we had two leftovers from the day before, not very much, but we had four apples left over and we had cantaloupe. We mixed it all up and made a big fruit salad out of it. Um, so being able to use what we have there and incorporate it in other areas. As far as um, the long-term projects or the tinkering, things that go on for a long time, it cannot just be thinking of it as a time block as, okay, you know, we're gonna give the kids to write forever. It can be more than one day. It doesn't mean to limit yourself in thinking that, you know, we're gonna give them as long as they need to finish this, but as long as they need, you know, within a week or whatever, make it longer, not just that set of block time. Um, where do we see our programs or how should they change in the next five or 10 years? More technology-based, global perspective, collaboration with community resources and long-term planning, which I think is what we're here for.